What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. As we know, throughout America, medication errors happen constantly. However, as you know, if you follow those six rights of medication administration, it should never happen. So let's get started in looking at what those six rights are. So one of the things that the NCLEX wants you to know and that you were able to speak to is that you can keep your patients safe. So medication errors is really going to be a big thing that's going to be on the NCLEX. So you may get an order from a provider that is contraindicated for your patient. So say that your patient has a potassium of 2 and there is an order that is placed for Lasix. So as we know, Lasix is a potassium wasting medication. It's a loop diuretic. So with this medication, you probably wouldn't want to give a potassium wasting medication. You would want to give a potassium sparing medication, such as spirolactone. So sometimes a physician can order the wrong dose, route, time, or medication. It can go through pharmacy. Pharmacy may not know. You really are the last person when it comes to medication errors from happening. So that's why it's so important for a nurse that you understand why medications are given and why you follow those six rights of medication administration. So let's begin with the right drug. So is this medication what the um, provider ordered? Is it contraindicated, right? Is the medication expired? I can't tell you how many times I've seen expired medications given to patients. So always check that expiration date. You want to make sure that you call pharmacy if you have any questions related to medications because they're ultimately going to be your one-stop shop and know the most about medications. Next we look is it the right dose? Is the medication the correct dosage on the order? Especially when you're getting medication that is mixed from pharmacy. That could be a major problem. So sometimes pharmacy, you know, it to errors to err as human, we all make mistakes and sometimes pharmacy will make a mistake. So you always have to look at the bag and make sure that the correct concentration is in the correct bag, right? Um, we may also have to give smaller doses than the quantity on hand, like we talked about before in our dosage calculation videos. If you haven't watched it, make sure that you follow up here in the corner and watch that video. Sometimes a physician will order something and we don't have what they desire. We have to break that in half. It's what we have on our quantity. So sometimes we have to give a half pill. Next, we look at right route. So is this medication being given intravenously, orally, rectally? We can also give it intramuscularly into the muscle, sublingually, it goes underneath the tongue, as well as subcutaneously, it goes into our fatty tissues. We never wanna change the route of medication. So if you have a medication that um, is given intravenously, you don't want to make the decision to give that orally. That's something you really need to discuss with the physician and the pharmacy to see if that's possible, depending on what's going on with your patient. Right time. Are you giving the medication at the right time? So with like level thyroxine, it's usually given in the morning prior to meal administration. That's like a big one that you'll see. Also, something else that you might see is albuterol and metoprolol. So as we know, these medications are usually contraindicated when they're given at the same time because one is a beta blocker and the other one is a beta antagonist. If they're given at the same time, they just cancel each other out. So that can be detrimental to our patients that really need to have these medications. So it's really important to know um, what each medication does and how they're gonna counteract with one another. Right patient, right? We wanna make sure that we're giving the right medications to our right patients. So we do that by verifying their name and their date of birth prior to giving the medication. And lastly, we look at right documentation. So as you're gonna learn through nursing school, and even when you take the NCLEX and you become a graduate nurse, and you finally get that nice RN behind your name, you know that right documentation, if it's not documented, it didn't happen, right? That's the same thing when you either become an LPN or an RN. It's the same thing. If you didn't document it, trust me, it didn't happen. So you wanna finish documentation after, after the medication is administered. If you finish it prior to administering the medication, then you just have to go back and fix your documentation. What's the point? Make sure that that medication was actually given prior to you finishing that documentation and never chart in advance. Like I just said, if you plan on giving a medication and you chart in advance that you gave this pain medication and you walk into the patient's room and the patient says, you know what? I'm not really in pain right now. I really don't want it. 
well, you've just done something that you shouldn't have. This is like an ethical moral issue with a lot of our patients. You don't want to provide a medication, or I should say document a medication prior to providing it because that's just falsification of records. So you never chart in advance and you document why medication was not given. So if a medication, like your pain medication is due at eight o'clock, you walk in, the patient said, you know, I'm not in pain right now, I don't need it. You need to document that the patient refused the medication because they're not in pain and you might be able to give it later. You don't want to be that nurse that comes, or you don't want to be that nurse where somebody comes behind you and they go to administer a medication and they tell the patient, oh no, here it says you got Ativan, so I can't give you Ativan right now. And the patient's like, I didn't get out of it. I don't know what you're talking about. And that was because you documented it ahead of time. So you never want to prolong or delay patients from receiving medications or treatment that they need because you documented earlier when you shouldn't have. I hope that this video was helpful for you in passing your nursing exams like a boss. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure that you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as here on YouTube. Make sure that you subscribe as well as like this video. I also have a website at www.nursechung.com where I will have NCLEX style questions as well as additional resources with each of my videos. So make sure that you check that out. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will speak with you all again soon. Bye.